sapiens billions of years ago, a race of immortals harnessed the emerald energy of green power, the most powerful force in existence. The immortals, the guardians of the universe, built the planet O. They divided the universe into 3,600 sectors, and they could keep an eye on all of them in this world. They sent a ring of willpower to every district to select a recruit. The ring chooses only the fearless ones. The 3,600 recruits made up the Green Lantern Corps, peacekeepers working all over the universe. The greatest threat to the corps is Parallax, an entity of fear. Only the legendary Green Lantern, Abinsur of Sector 2814, could capture it, which he imprisoned in the lost sector on the desolate planet Riot. In the present day, three alien astronauts accidentally crash and are stranded on the abandoned planet Riyadh in Sector 666 after their spacecraft broke down. They start walking on the planet's surface and suddenly fall into a hole. They see an alien imprisoned in a stone with green light. It's Parallax. He senses their fear, feeds on it, and their life force, killing them all and making himself more vital. He then breaks out of prison. On Earth, a child named Hal Jordan talks with his father, Martin Jordan, who works as a pilot. Hal is concerned whenever he hears his mother worry about his father because he will have a test flight on a new plane. He asks his father if he's scared, but he tells him that it's part of the job not to be, then tucks Hal in for the night. The following day, Hal wakes up late and starts running to catch the school bus, but he visits his father at the airport instead and asks permission to stay and watch him fly with a new plane. Then Martin gives his son his jacket and says to keep warm for him. After that, Bob tells Martin to get ready for the flight. Meanwhile, Hal goes to the office and meets with Carol Ferris, Bob's daughter, and Hector Hammond, the son of Senator Robert Hammond. Robert comes and asks Bob if everything is going according to plan. Then, Carol asks her father, Bob, if they can watch Martin from the airstrip, to which he agrees. They both run to go and watch Martin in the plane as it starts to take off. But suddenly, the plane's tail explodes and he loses control of the aircraft flying through the control tower and destroying it. He lands the plane on the ground while Hal runs to see his father. As he gets off the plane, it explodes, killing him, and Hal gets thrown back by the blast. Hal cries as he looks at the crash and the loss of his father. In the present day, in Sector 2814, Sinistro tells Abin Sur that it's too late because Planet Fentara and Planet Talok are now dead, and there are signs of yellow power everywhere. The Guardians are silent, and Sinistro demands an audience with them, then their communication is cut off. Ambin's reign tells him that danger is coming, and then there's an explosion, and he falls. Parallax appears and mortally wounds Ambin's sir, but he manages to escape and get in an escape pod. Back on Earth, a grown-up Hal Jordan wakes up, rushes to find his clothes, and leaves his apartment. As he drives to work, he messily wraps up a gift, thankfully avoiding crashing his car. He arrives late for a test flight at Ferris Aircraft, the same company his father worked in. While changing into his flight suit, Carol Ferris, his old friend and flight partner, scolds him for his tardiness. She tells him she doesn't want him for this test, but her father requests it. She continues by emphasizing the importance of this test and reminds him that the company needs this contract. During the test flight against the U-Cavs, Hal uses Carol as a decoy, so the U-Cavs take her out, allowing him to get behind them. Hall thinks of a new way to take them out, so he goes high up with his plane until he reaches a point where the u cats can't follow him. Then Hall takes out the two remaining jets. Hall remembers what happened to his father that day and experiences PTSD. As a result, he loses control of his plane just in time to get out before it crashes. At Ferris Company, Bob Banks, Carol, and the Ferris president Carl Ferris criticize Hall for his actions. Carl fires him, but he quits, while Carol argues that he's grounded, pending the results of an investigation. As Carl and Bob leave, Carol asks how what happened to him in the plane to make him lose control. He tells her the plane's controls locked up on him, but she asks if he choked. He ignores this by asking about her new job. They argue about this, but Carol tells him she doesn't want to see someone she cares about getting hurt, least of all him. Meanwhile, Abin Sir Crash lands on Earth, slowly dying due to his fatal injuries. He commands his ring to find a worthy successor on the planet, and a green light emerges. Hall enters his family home as his siblings watch the news about what happened during the flight test. While their mom looks at him sadly, Jack, his brother, scolds him for his recklessness as he doesn't want Hall to follow in her dad's footsteps. Hal goes to find his nephew Jason to greet him for his birthday. As soon as Jason sees him, he hugs Hall tightly and tells him he got worried about him. He cheers him up by recalling Jason playing baseball back then and encourages him to continue playing ball when the green ball of light enters Hal's chest. Hal gets whisked away as he leaves with a green light surrounding him that brings him to the crash site.
he sees the crashed ship and immediately goes to help. When he goes near it, he's shocked to see a purple alien. Hal helps the alien out of the spaceship, and with his last breath, Appen Sir tells him the ring chose him. He must place the ring in the lantern and speak the oath to become the protector of this sector and dies. Not knowing what to do, Hal calls his friend Tom and tells him everything. Confused, Tom goes to pick him up. He's shocked as he sees the ship and wants to go and study it. But suddenly, they hear the sound of helicopters coming, so they leave before the Department of Extra Normal Operations arrives to excavate the site. Back on the planet O, Sinestro is meeting with the Guardians. He tells them that Abin Sur is dead, and the unknown enemy has annihilated four Green Lanterns in two other planets. But the Guardians are already aware of the threat and are assessing the situation. Sinestro says that while they're figuring out what to do, more innocent people are dying. He asks them to let him and a group of his lanterns fight the new enemy, and they agree. Meanwhile, Dr. Hector Hammond is summoned to a secure facility by the DEO, and Dr. Amanda Waller introduces herself. She shows him the corpse of the purple alien, Ampin Sir. She tells him that a xenogalogist such as him is most suited to do an initial assessment of the alien's physiology. As he's doing the autopsy, a piece of Parallax's DNA inside the corpse suddenly injects itself inside his finger. Hector feels happy because they give him this chance and tell Amanda that the universe will change now with this discovery. But before leaving, Amanda tells him that all this should stay secret. At his home, Hal puts on the ring and tries to charge it, but he can't. After a few tries, he says the oath of the Green Lanterns while in a trance from the lantern's glow. Suddenly, Carol knocks on the door, but Hal refuses to let her in and invites her for a drink. At a bar, Hall apologizes to Carol, shocking her, and laughs. He recognizes the song playing and asks her to dance with him. She also tells him that she checked the flight data, saying that there was nothing wrong with it, implying that Hall did choke, which caused him to crash the plane. Annoyed at her revelation, he immediately leaves the bar. While going to his car, Bob and the UTAV pilots ambush him. After getting a severe beating from them, Hal unintentionally uses the ring's power to knock all three out with a massive fist of green energy. The ring makes a ball of green light around him and flies him up into the air, out of the Earth's atmosphere. He then goes through a wormhole to the planet O, where he passes out as he goes through the planet's atmosphere. Meanwhile, Hector wakes up in pain and upon seeing himself in the mirror, he notices that his eyes have turned yellow. Hall wakes up with a strange green skin-like suit over him, similar to Abin Sir. Then, an alien named Tomar Ri comes and greets him. He tells him that the ring shows him, brings him there, and that he's the first human ever selected. He shows him around planet O, telling him that it was created for the Green Lanterns by the Guardians. To be chosen to join the Green Lanterns Corps is the highest honor and great responsibility. Then, they both fly around, and Jordan is so excited. While they're flying, Jordan asks Tomar Re what green energy is. Tomar Re tells him that the energy comes from the planet's main battery. Its power comes from the will of every living creature in the universe, and it's the most substantial source of energy in the universe. He takes into a Green Lantern meeting at the Great Hall, which Sinistro leads. He informs the Green Lanterns about Parallax killing Abin Sur and four other lanterns. He tells everyone that the Guardian has chosen him to lead a squadron of the best lanterns to seek out and fight Parallax. He reminds them they're invincible when united and have never been defeated, as they're the Green Lantern Corps. After that, Tomar Ri takes Hall to the training grounds, where he starts teaching him how to master the ring by learning to focus his will to create what he can see in his mind. The ring's limits are only what the user imagines. The ring blinks, and he explains that the ring will inform him if there's an imminent threat. Then he meets Kilowog, the chief trainer, who immediately begins testing Hal and showing him that his opponents won't fight fair. He also tells him to be careful of the gravity of the sun. Sinistro arrives to see the human, and he dismisses Kilowog as he will be the one to continue Hell's training. He tells him to ignore his fear because when one is afraid, one can't act, if one can't act, one can't defend, and if one can't defend, one dies. After defeating him in combat, Sinistro tells him that Hal reeks of fear and says he's not worthy of being Abinsur's successor. Realizing his fear and weakness, Hal quits and returns to Earth, but he keeps the power ring and lantern. Meanwhile, Hector teaches a lesson when he discovers his new abilities. He could now read people's minds and hears a student say that his class was boring. Hector throws the student from his seat just by looking at him. He dismisses the class and goes to the laboratory to test his blood, discovering the presence of yellow particles that have begun to spread in his blood. Later, his father sends him a message and tells him to meet him in the office. 
During their meeting, Hector realizes that the DEA chose him to do the autopsy on the alien just because of his father's connections and not for his abilities. Overhearing his father's thoughts, he hears him saying he's embarrassing for him and leaves. In Sector 2312, at the edge of the Milky Way galaxy, Sinistro arrives with his squadron and attacks Parallax. It immediately breaks their binds and instantly feeds on the fear of the lanterns. He returns to the Guardians and reports to them about it. The Guardians tell Sinistro that Parallax was once one of their own until he desired to control the yellow essence of fear, only to become the embodiment of fear itself. Thinking that the only way to fight fear with the power of their enemy is to use fear itself, Sinestro asks the Guardians to make a ring with the same yellow power. Back on Earth, Senator Robert Hammond and Carl Harris are celebrating the new contract with the Air Force military. Hal is meeting with Carol, and Hector sees them and feels jealous. He waits until Hal leaves, then he approaches Carol and starts talking with her, trying to impress her by telling her about the alien. His father comes and stops him, and he angrily leaves them. Later, Hector attempts to kill his father by telekinetically hitting the tail of his helicopter with a pipe as he leaves the party. The aircraft crashes into the party, while Hal uses his ring by making it into a car and successfully parks it, saving the senator and the guests at the party. Then he gets Carol from under the wreckage and leaves while people are recording him. Meanwhile, Hector returns home and feels angry because he couldn't kill his father, and his body transforms into an alien. The next day, Tom goes to Hal's apartment and persuades him to show him the outfit. Hal relents, and just as he's about to charge the ring, he shows him the suit. Later that day, Hal pays Carol a visit. Upon closer inspection, she recognizes Hal behind the costume and mask. Still, she can't believe it, so Hal tells her what happened, and they have a quiet day together. On the other hand, Carol is disappointed in him after finding that Hal left the corpse. After that, Hector returns to the laboratory and does a new blood test. He sees that the yellow particles have now overtaken all his blood. At this time, Amanda Waller arrives, requesting him to go to the facility. When she touches his shoulder, Hector sees her memories, and he can now access mnemonic data. She takes him to the facility, where he meets with his father, and he promises to fix everything upon seeing his appearance. Dr. Waller tells Hector that they have detected a second alien life form buried in the first, and that he got exposed to it. He says he has never felt better and attacks his father, but the doctors stop him and inject him with a sedative. While Hal is thinking alone, the ring signals him of danger. Hector wakes up bound, and the doctor tries to sedate him again. Using his telekinesis, he kills him, then frees himself and puts his father in his place. He kills the guards as well and throws Amanda high against a wall. Before killing her, Hal arrives, and Hector drops Waller. As she falls, Hal saves her by creating a pool of water that whisks her away from further danger. He tries to free the senator, but Hector attacks him again. Hector touches him, seeing his memories, he knows everything now and recognizes Hall. Then he burns his father and touches Hector's head with his ring. At this moment, Parallax feels the presence of Ab and Sir's ring and decides to attack Earth to destroy the ring of the one who was able to defeat him. Hall realizes that Parallax is heading to Earth, and he tells Tom and Carol about Hector, who killed his father. Hall also tells them that the ring made a mistake by choosing him. Carol says he's courageous and can overcome his fears and that she believes in him. Meanwhile, Parallax orders Hector to kill Hal, but Hal returns to Planet O to ask for the Green Lantern's help. The Guardians have forged the Yellow Ring and have given it to Sinistro. He tells them they will concede Earth's destruction to Parallax to protect O. However, Hal appears, tells Sinistro not to use the Yellow Ring, and asks for the corpse to help him save his planet from Parallax's imminent invasion. They deny his request but allow Hal to return and defend his home planet. Upon returning to Earth, Hal finds that Hector has kidnapped Carol and plans to inject her with Parallax essence. He convinces Hector that he will give up the ring in exchange for the release of Carol. Hal agrees and hands it over, and Hector drops Carol. He tests out the ring, which blasts a hole before he points it at Hal, but it doesn't work because only the person it chooses can use it. Parallax arrives and consumes Hector's life force for failing to kill Hal. Hal tries to get the ring from Hector's dead body, but Parallax grabs and feeds on him. Carol manages to launch a plane's missiles on Parallax, he leaves and Carol gets the rings and throws them at Hal, who immediately wears it. Parallax is now wreaking havoc on the city, and Hal arrives to battle the monster. Using the ring's power, he creates various weapons to save the people. He recites the oath, draws more strength from it, and faces the foe. 
After gaining the enemy's full attention, Hal lures Parallax away from Earth to chase him across the solar system. He goes toward the Sun, and Parallax is now caught in the Sun's gravitational pull and disintegrates the entity. Hal loses consciousness after the battle, but is saved by Sinistro, Kilowog, and Tomari before he too gets pulled toward the Sun. Later, the entire Green Lantern Corps congratulates Hal for his bravery. Sinistro tells Hal he's now responsible for protecting his sector as a Green Lantern. Hal and Carol spend one last time together, and he tells her that he'll be away for a while. The two share a kiss, and Hal flies away. The movie ends with Sinistro taking the yellow ring and places it on his finger, causing his green suit to change to yellow along with his eyes.